Hi everyone, I'm Sloane from SloaneBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one hit me by surprise because when I came in from running this morning, I was like, I'm going to do Judy Garland because she's been in my head for two days. Totally flashback to 1988, 89, 90, early 90s, somewhere in that time frame, and to this restaurant in Burbank, California that we used to go to called Granada. Mexican restaurant located centrally in Burbank, studios around the corner, NBC, Warner Brothers, all the aerospace companies, the theme parks, etc. Burbank is a little city, but it's a big little city. So everybody knows everybody in this big little city. Um, and this restaurant is known for its margaritas. They will kick you on your ass. If you could drink more than four, that's a lot, but if you could drink more than four, I know there are people that do. I don't even know what to say to you because I could never get past two. I was a lightweight though, maybe. <laughs> I couldn't get past two. And at that time, you could actually smoke in this restaurant. Now, the restaurants were full of booths. There's a bar. You know, there's TV sets, but there was like this, this part that was like the old booth where you could sit in a booth and it wasn't all cold and isolated. The red booths, the restaurant stuff, you know, from, from way back. Anyway, used to go in there all the time once or twice a week. I ate there through two pregnancies. But anyway, before I got pregnant, we used to go in there, have our margaritas, smoke our cigarettes, because you could smoke in the restaurant. Seriously, drink the margaritas. I was always the driver, really, so I didn't drink too many, and I couldn't anyway. I was a lightweight. Every time we would come in during this particular time frame, whether it be once a week, once a month, we'd miss a month, come in you know, later on if we were traveling, whatever it was, we ended up sitting beside this woman. And I remember she caught me because she was an older woman at the time. So she would be almost a hundred years old right now. But at that time, she was probably um, like, I don't know, in her late sixties, early seventies, somewhere in there. And she had this blonde hair and it was short, not as short as mine, but short. And she had these, these piercing eyes. So when you said hi to her, it almost made you uncomfortable because she could see who you were in a hot second, okay? She could see who you were. Just look right through you, piercing eyes, okay? <laughs> and then she had the smile where you wanted to talk to her. And at the time, she sat across from her younger male companion. I feel like he was probably about 15 to 20 years younger. And there I sat on the opposite tail table being 15 to 20 years younger than my partner at the time. So it was really interesting. It was like reverse, but similar. I was a younger blonde. She was an older blonde, but I had no idea who this woman was. We talked to her casually, peripherally. We'd eat dinner. We'd always leave first and they'd be still sitting there. And we talked and talked and we talked about things, but never about anything too personal. She never let on who she was. I enjoyed her. Every time we saw her, we'd be like, hey, how are you guys? Drinking our margaritas, smoking our cigarettes, okay? So jump ahead, eating our chips and salsa. I had to add that. If you're in Southern Los Angeles, you know we have an influx of Mexican restaurants. This one in particular is in Burbank, stands alone and is its own entity. Drink the margaritas at your own. Beware because you will they will knock you on your ass. <laughs> anyway, so we would talk to this woman and then you know, later on, we didn't see her again. And I always wondered who she was. Jump ahead to 1995 and it's on the, on the TV. I happened to look over because I'm hearing that Lana Turner died and I'm like doing a double take, like, holy shit, that's who that lady was in the restaurant. Unbelievable that I had these conversations with her and her partner at the time. And I didn't know it was her. I know I should have picked up that it was her, but I was just fascinated with her energy. Actually, I really could have cared less who she was because I didn't really know who she was. But the energy that went through her, you know, from her looks that she had lived a life in a way that you didn't even, you were like, I don't even understand. Okay. The life that she lived. And then you also knew in a certain way that she was this empathic, creative creature with the strength. She was like um, probably way, way ahead of her time and probably too strong for any man that she was ever with. Like it would take a certain type of man to actually probably 
balance her energy because her end but when I met her her energy was straight up intense fun but intense like there was nothing frivolous about her now when you think of her astrological chart I'm just gonna do it briefly people she was a double Aquarius a Sun and Moon in Aquarius with a Gemini rising here's where the intensity was that girl that lady that actress had a first house Pluto in Gemini okay so she could use her words to express and convey the depth of emotions and I'm assuming in her personal life she could use her words to rip a man down to the ground <laughs> and make him I don't know crazy okay because she was extremely articulate ahead of her time just detached enough detached from her emotions to be able to be extremely verbally articulate and just I think this would lead her into kind of violent situations which if you read about her she had this history of domestic violence around her everywhere she went she also loved to drink I witness that part but she loved to drink and she loved that whole 1940 smoky bar that whole vibe that whole that whole like bar vibe thing she was definitely that person who knew that that's who she was at that time from who she was if you look at her pictures early on in her life oh my god she was just stunning but you could see the intensity in her eyes she couldn't just be the sweater girl that she was pushed into at times she started telling me about how she was discovered because there's this whole story that she went for you know a milkshake at the time and oh my god she stood out there at 15 and <clears throat> some guy producer executive whoever from the studio walked by and he's like oh my god that girl we're just gonna pay her a shitload of money and put her in a movie we have to stop believing this bullshit she's laughing right now because of my sarcasm it's like I can hear her laughing in my head she said that's not how it happened here's how it happened she's saying that as she was growing up she was kind of um she had difficulty in her childhood and she was kind of fostered out she's talking about her detachment through the abuse that she experienced growing up so she's saying that as she was kind of pushed away from her family she was I guess abused I don't know if this means hit or sexually I'm assuming it's sexually I mean come on she's a girl they sexually abuse everybody I mean whatever anyway she's talking about that and she built up this 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 I'm gonna fight you before you fight me attitude this was her attitude she didn't look it she was this this combination of fun icy blonde who went for intense pictures and was a pinup girl at the same time so she had this dichotomy and she had a strength in how she spoke okay so I get that but she does come from actually she's telling me she does come from childhood sexual abuse not from her family but whoever she was living with I don't know if she went to other family members or somebody else she's also she had this strength about her that offended people remember in astrology first house Pluto Pluto in the first house from birth people either fucking love you or they fucking hate you okay nothing in between you are not the in-between person you are not the girl of balance what you are is loved and adored because you have powerful expressions and experiences or you are hated because you are a truth teller <laughs> she had Pluto retrograde in Gemini in the first what that means is she came back here to learn how to use her words without annihilating others and it was a power play for her she was learning all about the undercurrents of power but with a little bit of an edge and in the movie industry though be it speaking movie radios television in its con in its early conception is Gemini it's verbal communication she needed to communicate and if she couldn't communicate with her words she was gonna whip an ashtray at your head I love that about these actresses from that time frame they just <laughs> all out and just be like I'm throwing that at your head and you better run and duck I love that I love that passion we've lost that passion I love a man that can stand up to a woman who has that kind of fire in her though it be slightly abusive I'll agree but who has that fire in her without backing down like a baby Ugh, I can't deal with it she picked strong men but they couldn't handle her and I think it had to do with her her intense intellect 
her childish emotional nature hidden behind an intelligent and a strength, okay? So I think that she was probably a little bit of a verbal terrorist in her relationships and she could cut a man down to size. And here's something I didn't know about her that it was so funny because this morning as I was taught, like running and thinking of Judy Garland and listening to music in my head and listening to Judy scream at me, that one had a temper. So I'm listening to her with her temper, not at me, but about her circumstances, okay? So I'm listening to that and suddenly I go back to, this is really weird, I go back to my birth mother because y'all know I'm adopted. Anyway, my birth name is Sloan and I remember I had asked where the name came from and I was told it came from a soap opera that Ryan O'Neill was in. Um, obviously my mom would skip school and she would watch the soap opera and then there was a character named Sloan couple of episodes and I think she was an abused character in the, the soap opera, but aren't they all? Anyway, I didn't know this, but Lana Turner played in Peyton Place. So that's the second connection. It was just really interesting because I went right to Peyton Place this morning and then I thought besides Judy Garland, I was going to go Ryan O'Neill, Farrah Fawcett way, but I wasn't sure, but I was like stuck on the soap opera. So it was really Lana trying to come through. She kind of like goes like this and shoves Judy out of the way, which is probably why Judy was screaming at me, but it's fine. I actually feel like they were friends. I don't know about how good of friends, but I feel like they were friends on some level and I don't think it's offensive. Anyway, getting back to Lana, she was just this electric ball of like strength. And here's the thing, she got bored very easily and wanted to keep like learning and creating. Acting wasn't doing it for her, okay? Acting wasn't doing it for her. Then I flashed to one of my favorite movies, which was Imitation of Life. Sometime in the 50s, I think it was released. It's kind of a slow movie and it can be a little bit monotonous because they don't quicken the plot. I don't know. Back then they had to get all the dialogue in, which is really interesting. But she plays this character who's focused on her career, neglectful of her daughter, throws her daughter over to her daughter meets this other little girl and the little girl looks like a white kid, but the, the mom is a black maid. Anyway, long, boring story because it does drone on. However, the concept is so interesting. I wish they'd do a remake of that, Imitation of Life, because it's so like, it's actually so apropos for the life that she lived with the experience of the mother and daughter, the neglect, and the, the opposite, the maid in the movie who was the black lady who had the daughter that could pass for white but was half black, so mixed race kid, and how that mixed race kid wanted to achieve what Lana Turner's character had, so she, she shut her own mother out of her life, and then Anyway, it's a whole plot thing, okay? So it brings in race and it brings in morality and it brings in the context of like how much energy you give to a person over your own needs. Very interesting. And it played out in Lana's life, okay? So she's kind of saying that. But first, I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm being directed all the way back to when she got discovered. She was not discovered randomly is what she's telling me. That's a bunch of BS, all right? She doesn't mince words here. She is saying that when they said that she was at the drugstore having the milkshake and then she was discovered, that wasn't how it happened. When she came back from wherever she was in the foster care and she was with her family and I'm getting piercing, I always get these piercing headaches when they start trying to get in my body. Um, it kind of feels like you're gonna pass out and you get woozy like you are drunk or I'm feeling drunk. Anyway, <laughs> haven't drank in years, but I'm feeling it now. Those margaritas are catching up. They're catching up right now energetically. How weird is that? Okay, so what I'm getting with her is when she went back to her family, they had been talking. They were worried about her. They didn't know where to place her within the context of society at that time, which I find really interesting. So Lana's family didn't know what to do with her because she was so intelligent, so creative, so high strung, so juvenile, so all over the place, and so in between everybody, and so in and out of emotions, I'm assuming they mean really psychically empathic, really truthfully. Anyway, Lana came back to her family and the mother was talking to family friends about what they were gonna do with her because they were actually worried about her. Like, what are we gonna do with her? We don't know where to place her. We've sent her away and she was with those people and they said they had to for the sake of the family and to protect her from some issue that was going on in the family, but that was BS too is what she's telling me. They were grooming her at some point, at that point. She's saying she was being groomed. It gave her her fist. She's throwing me her fist. She would never back down from a man. That's what she's telling me. <laughs> Just never back down. <laughs> um, this comes into play later on. Anyway, she, the family friend, 
new, either an executive or um, producer, I don't know what you call them, someone who could hire people at the studios and actually went by the milkshake place deliberately they had told Lana to sit there, where to sit and what time to be there so that he could walk by and set it up. It was theatrics at its finest at the time. It was literally theatrics. So it was set up for her to be there for him to meet her. They knew who they were going to meet and they knew who they were going to hire. It was set up. This is a backroom deal from the mother. This was a deal from the mother, just so you know. It was not happenstance. So for all you people out there that think you can just put your kid on the corner and someone's going to discover them, that rarely happens. That's what she's saying to me. That didn't happen in her case, but it was great PR. It was great PR, right? Like here's this beautiful blonde 15 year old who wasn't really blonde, but there she is. And she's discovered that face. She's so piercing that they start to put her in these roles that are pretty freaking intense. And then they repackage her and she's kind of showing me like, you know, like I am the sweater girl. She's pointing to her breasts and she had this really darling little figure. Um, really cute from the forties, just like a really cute little figure. And then suddenly she was becoming a sex symbol, but her intellect wanted to be intense. She didn't want to do sex symbol roles. She just didn't want to be there being a pinup girl. So she kept fighting like they all do. Like anybody who's attractive, who wants to be taken seriously. Should this really be an issue people in society? If you're attractive, you can't have a brain. Uh, I don't think so. I think we can have whatever we want all at once. I think we can be whatever and whatever. I don't think beauty distinguishes whether you're intelligent and whoever put that out there is a dumbass themselves. Okay. Because she was so intelligent and she got bored and she was always learning and she wanted to do all of these different things. She had this mind that went everywhere. So she was put into these sweater girl parts. Like here she is. She's all sexy. And then she's put into these intense like spy parts. And then she's put into these kind of broken women with moral choices and making the wrong choice kind of parts. So she's put into all these places and it's so interesting. Okay. So time goes on. She has like this vice. She has this vice. She likes sex. This is what she's showing me. Well, she's not showing me the sex. I don't care if she does, but anyway, she's not showing me that she's showing me. Okay. This reminds me of a Taurus. I don't know why I want to say this, but she's showing me this sense of like, I'm going to lie in bed. I'm going to eat my crackers. I think it was a thing in the forties because like Marilyn did it. I think all the way up to like Anna Nicole Smith did it too. So maybe it's a blonde thing. I don't know what it is, but anyway, she would sit in bed. She liked her men to come to her. She liked good looking men. She wanted to be the woman. She wanted her man to step up and take charge. She, she married men that were, sorry, someone's touching my head back here. One of her men, actually, she married men that were strong and they were outspoken and they had extreme personalities within their creativeness, but they were all unique. She liked uniqueness. She needed it, but there was always a freaking power struggle. She could never get along with a man. She couldn't keep her mouth shut, especially back then. Can you imagine back then? Like it's bad enough now. Like I get yelled at for opening my mouth and it's like in 2020, like there's men out there that don't like that. They don't like that shit. It takes a really strong man to handle his equal woman in intellect, strength and appearance. It takes a really strong man and there's very few. And I'm thinking back then there was even less of them, but I am hearing that she did, she did love, she had many husbands, but she, like seven, <laughs> what's that about? Really, what's that about? Stop getting married. If you want to have kids and you want the guy to be responsible financially, he has to be anyway. You don't really need to marry them. Just saying. Um, that's some concocted bullshit, isn't it? But back then, I guess they married everybody they slept with. I'm not really sure about that. But what I feel with her is she did have love, but she couldn't, she couldn't allow them to have power over her. So it was this constant struggle is what she shows me. And then she'd pop a pill and she'd drink and she'd smoke and she'd get worked up and she'd scream at them. And then there was an ashtray being thrown across the room and you better fucking run. And she wasn't one to mince, mince words. When I met her, she was super quiet and obviously hidden with who she was. But when she was with a man and you were in her bedroom, you better watch out. She was Oh my gosh. Okay. So she was this intense energy and it was hard for her with men because she says a lot of them, there were two that didn't, there was the, the, the one that was, um, there was the one that was, there were quite some few entertainers. And I think it was the musical one that she actually really liked, but 
she couldn't get along with these people at the time. She just, she was too young. Like, I think she was too young when she first started getting married. Maybe that's it. Remember, one probably shouldn't get married till they're in their 30s because you change so much from 20 to 30 for all you people getting married out young. Like, you change. You're not even the same person. So it's ridiculous to think you could meet somebody in your 20s and stay with them your whole life. I know people did, but I think that's because they died at 40, quite frankly. But she's showing me this, like, this intense personality. She was a little bit what's the word I want to use a little bit now I'm going to use a really <laughs> offensive term she had emotions like she was PMSing all the time like she would go from hot to cold she would need to satiate herself she would go back so she had this like a little bit of bipolar or alcoholism or both whatever that was she would do that now she talks about when she got pregnant when she got pregnant with her daughter Okay, so here's how I'm seeing this. I wanted to ask about this, so I'm trying. And the guy that she killed over there, and I'm saying that Lana killed him, not her daughter, Cheryl. And for those of you that don't know, Google it, read about it. Um, Lana Turner had voice. So my camera just shut off, and I believe it's the Johnny guy that Lana Turner was dating at the time that this extreme situation happened. Now, I wanted to explain this. I see her sitting in a bed. I'm getting images of this. She's sitting in her bed. She's not really sitting. She's kind of lying down. She's got a glass on the floor. It's like a tumbler glass. It's tumbled over. Literally a tumbler, they called them that. And it's <clears throat> square glass, like you put whiskey in or vodka. It's not a wine glass. It's not sophisticated looking. This is a woman who was drinking and popping pills at the time. Her career was going down. She wasn't really feeling good about herself. It was a problem. She had to resurrect herself. She'd film stuff, but she didn't know how it would go. She was having these, these, I think what was happening to her at the time, truth be told, I feel like her daughter had hit the age where she was when she'd moved back home after the sexual abuse she'd experienced. And I don't even know if something went on in her home too, but I do know it went on in the foster home or the family that raised her or the family that she was put into. She was, okay, <clears throat> she was kind of given to them and that's how her career started, okay? This is weird, but that's what I'm feeling. So we're gonna have problems. We're gonna foster you out. You're going to be over here in this family. Some weirdo in the family is gonna do shit to a child because it's with these fucking weirdos do. It's going to tweak this woman's mind. She's going to have addiction issues, sexual intimacy issues. This happens to boys too. And she's going to have a temper when you come to her, when you want to love her, when you want to be intimate with her. We have to stop this from happening. This is a whole different conversation, but this is what was happening to her. She started from about the age of her daughter turning 12 and now her daughter's 14 and she's looking at her daughter. She's seeing herself and her daughter and it's triggering her. She's drinking. She's not paying attention to her daughter. She's popping pills. She's doing all kinds of things. She's not a complete mess but she's somewhat of a mess and it's very stressful for her and her no one's looking at her the same way. She's aging. She doesn't want to be sexualized, but nobody's looking at her. So that's a hard thing for a really beautiful woman. <clears throat> and later on in life when I knew her, she still had the men. So it obviously never stopped her, but it is a hard thing. So there she is on that morning. She's in her bed. I see her actually with those things that they wear when they sleep, those blackout things on your eyes, and she's got blackout curtains. It's a little bit of an interesting bedroom. It's got curtains that are proper curtains. Um, it's not like hippie chick. It's like decorated properly or like how you would think it would be for that time frame. Um, and I'm seeing her in the bed, and I'm seeing her lover come over, and she's like... <laughs> She's like dismissive to him. Now this is going to piss him off because he has an ego. He's a man. Men always operate off of ego. I'm sorry, men out there, but it's true. Especially when this woman gets drunk and she uses her intellect. And I don't think he was her equal. I think he was a handsome guy. And I think he was like brute strength. And I think he was like cute and all of those things. But I also don't think he had the same intellect as her. I think she was smart. I think she was really smart, high IQ, and she could fuck with him. And he knew he was being fucked with, but he couldn't like mince words with her. And then I see her throwing a glass item at him. It's either an ashtray or a glass tumbler, but she's pissed because he woke her up. 
these things are on her eyes, covering her eyes. She opens her eyes and she's just like, are you bugging me? And he's trying to talk to her. She has no interest. I think that they start to argue over somebody that he's with or that she's with. One of the two of them has a, a third person. There's a third person involved. And I feel like an argument starting. And all I can see is the bedroom door shut. The room is black. It kind of smells like a lot of cigarettes, like the old hotel rooms back in the day where everybody just went in there and smoked like maniacs. And there's all of the shit flying around the room. She's throwing shit. She's saying, get out. He's not going to leave. I'm not leaving. Um, I feel like he was a gambler and I feel like he was using her money for something. I feel like he either wrote a check, gambled, did something, and she's so pissed right now. So she's going to get him and she's going to fuck with him. So this is going on and he grabs her. She's out of bed now and she's walking towards him. Women don't do that when you're mad because there's the odd man that will punch you and he's hit her before. He's not beaten her, but he's like slapped her back, slapped her face, grabbed her, grabbed her by the throat, punched her in the eye, shit like this, like angry guy stuff, okay? So he's done this kind of stuff with her. And then what we're told is that the daughter, Cheryl, opens the door because she can hear this violence going on and she grabs a knife from the kitchen and he is running out the door and boom. He gets stabbed, okay? He gets stabbed by the daughter. This is what we're told. The daughter, the poor daughter, okay? And she's still alive. I think she's probably around the age that Lana was. I think she was born in 1946. I want to say she's a, June, July. I want to say she's a cancer. God, I should have kept that in my head. I want to say she's a cancer. I know the boyfriend was a Libra. I think he was a Libra. Don't quote me this morning. The numbers are going out of my head. Um, there's people coming in my head and now my hands are itchy. Anyway, I feel like he was gambling. He spent her money, he wrote a check. He took something he shouldn't have took because he had license. He was sleeping with her and he was using her because that's what happens to really smart, beautiful women. They get used. They're a mark because they want love. They want love, but there's nobody out there that can love them the way they need to be loved. This was the problem. This is what I'm hearing her say meaning they don't meet their match once in a while but there's very few secure men this is what she's saying with the career she had and I'm sure that all of the women out there that are really beautiful have this issue with the men that they date and marry etc there's probably a chaos going on because somewhere in our society the men want to be the ones with this great career so when the women is accomplished they have a problem ego wise with it especially if they're not developed or if they're jealous or whatever if the woman makes more money you hear it all the time you hear it all the time um anyway what happened is i am asking if the daughter really did this i'm asking if the daughter did this what i am hearing is the guy, Johnny, is shaking his head. The daughter didn't do this. This was a fight between them and she stabbed him. So I'm asking where the knife came from. The daughter did come upstairs with a knife, but he had already been stabbed when he opened the door. This is what I'm seeing. Okay. This is really weird. There was some kind of... Um, I wonder why the police didn't check this. There was some kind of a, um, like a cheese platter, food platter up there with a long knife on it. She fucking stabbed him with it. He probably opened his mouth. I'm sorry, that's not funny. But no, she stabbed him. She's, she's straight out letting me know that it was not her daughter. And this is probably something in hindsight after she crossed over. But she literally stabbed him and the daughter came up with a knife. He was opening the door after being stabbed, grabbing himself. And she was like, shit, what did I do? I think this was like a drunken, violent rage thing going on um and i think she accidentally killed him in a fit of rage which isn't really an accident but the outcome was not what she intended and then he died okay weird thing to say he was going to end up murdered anyway if he didn't die within two years of him dying so it's very interesting now when you get to the, why the daughter did it she opened the door and actually he fell onto her but the knife was already in him and on him and he was dying like he's like dying opening the door the daughter took the fall for the mother and i'm assuming oh god i'm getting cold here they all come back again not the daughter because she's here i mean here on earth not here in the house um she's wherever she is 
but I actually feel like Lana stabbed him. The daughter went upstairs with a knife. She was used to doing this. She would say, get out. She would hold that knife and say, get out and chase him out. But the mother would keep putting herself in jeopardy because she wanted to hang out with him because he was dangerous. And I think he was a good lover. Who am I to judge? Anyway, I think he was a good lover and she had to have him. This is like an addiction thing. This is like a sex addiction thing. This is childhood sexual abuse. This is the repercussions of all of that garbage. This is the price she paid for the career she had. This is what she's saying. It was all set up. Go back to when she's eight. Go back to when she's eight. Go back to these men abusing her. Go back to the circumstance. Go back to the family patterning. Go back to the life that she picked. Go back to the daughter taking responsibility for what happened to her because she was the breadwinner. The daughter could get out of this, but oh my God. Okay. She has asked her daughter for forgiveness on so many different levels that it's really difficult to understand. She's literally asked her daughter to forgive her and it's been very, very difficult for this to happen. The daughter who's still alive has had many vivid dreams of the mother and had a hugely hard time. There was sexual abuse. I will tell you something. This, this Johnny guy was not the first lover of her mother to go in since that Cheryl was 10 and kind of grope and molest her and do stuff to her. This cycle keeps repeating itself, people. We must stop it. There's something and especially in the entertainment industry, this is shocking because this is like a setup thing. She's telling me that when she was a child, she was farmed out for sex. And then now we're getting to this point and this is how she got discovered. This is how she got discovered. Okay. I'm not going to swear again. Anyway, the daughter took the fall for the mother and ended up completely. Okay. What I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is that the daughter loved her mother so much, but like the movie, and I think it came out after this shit happened, where Lana Turner's character is neglectful of the daughter on an emotional level. Lana Turner was neglectful of her daughter on an emotional level by making her take the fall when all the daughter wanted in the movie was the mother's attention and all um, Cheryl Crane wants is Lana's attention. This is like a weird cycle. This is what I'm seeing. Um, so I'm seeing that. And then she's saying to me, she got known for that and she was so far in it. When I'm looking at it, when she crossed over, her daughter and her were friends. This is what I'm getting. Um, she's so grateful for what her daughter did and so remorseful for the trouble that it caused her because it really tweaked her daughter's head. It would tweak your head. I mean, it would tweak your head. You're going to go, you're going to get locked up. You're going to go to juvie for committing a murder you didn't com to commit to begin with. For your parent who's a lunatic in the middle of a domestic violence thing, it happens all the time. It happens all the time, actually, I'm sure. It's just not with famous people that we don't hear about. Um, I am also getting, and this, I'm going to say this, I'm also getting that Lon is telling me about a lot of the men in Hollywood and a lot of the experiences she had with them. And she's another one who doesn't like Kirk Douglas. So that's two I've talked to. She's, <laughs> I just got a flash of him in a movie and she says he's like that. That's how he's like. She doesn't like him either. These men were trying to control her. She had to stab him. She had to stab him. She had to stab him. She's just like, I had to stab him. I guess, I think what was happening is he was taking her money for gambling and then getting in gambling debt, coming to her asking for more money. That's what I'm being shown. And then I feel like he was going to get murdered anyway. So she just did what was going to happen. And he is still over here in the corner. He kind of crept up on me. What they do when they come into my energy field is I either get them like visually in my mind or they start like touching me and I start to get like itchy. I can feel them or they come right into my energy field, which makes my eyes go glazed and dizzy. So they just like go completely into my energy field and I'm like, oh my God, I am fucking dizzy. So he did that, but I feel sorry for him in a way because he didn't get to play out the karma of his actions. He played it out in a different way. So she started some shit with their karma or whatever, because he was supposed to die at the hands of another person and that, and he was taken right out of that experience. So that experience has to happen again. And the experience with her has to happen again is what I'm hearing. I don't know what that means. Um, She's sitting in a chair over here, over on this side, under my window. And she's looking at me 
and she's talking about a documentary that's going to be coming out soon. So she's talking about her documentary. She's involved in this documentary and she's talking to a young filmmaker right now, male filmmaker, male guy, guy, young man. She likes young men. <laughs> that's what she says. Hasn't stopped on the other side. She likes them and she, she, she enjoys holding court. She may have been a person that had a little bit of post-traumatic stress and very selfish, slightly like nutty, nutty addictive qualities that made her react in a certain way. But oh my God, she was lovely when she was young. But when I'm looking at this, she's sitting over there and she has a turban on her head. She has a turban. I wonder if that's like a dig at a psychic. <laughs> She's not digging at me. I'm just wondering. It's funny. I can't believe I knew this woman in the restaurant. And I didn't know it was her. What can I tell you? I didn't really watch a lot of her movies. I knew who she was and I knew Imitation of Life. But other than that, I didn't really know who it was. And she didn't look like she did in that movie. But when I think about it, her eyes did look like that. But she's wearing um, like, a tur like a turban thing with a jewel right here. And she has a light. She has one of those old, I think she liked vintage kind of material, velvet over the lampshades hanging down and she's turning that light on and she's sitting under it and they have the microphone. This guy is actually channeling her. She's doing a documentary. She's talking to another person right now. He's probably in his mid forties and he's fascinated with her. He just loves everything about her and they're talking. They talk in dream state. They talk on the astral level. They talk all the time. Look for this documentary. I feel it's about to happen. All right, you guys. I have to go on to the next person. I feel like I'm in a rush today. Once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com.